In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome everybody to Mass uh, this evening here at Magdala, on the great uh, occasion of the celebration of St. Paul's conversion. Uh, there's a wonderful line in scripture that there's more joy in heaven over one who converts than over a thousand or ninety-nine uh, that don't. And so we rejoice over this conversion and every conversion. And especially St. Paul, all the great graces that we have received through his conversion, through his fidelity to Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who taught the whole world through the preaching of the blessed Apostle Paul, draw us, we pray, nearer to you through the example of him whose conversion we celebrate today. And so make us witnesses to your truth in the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul addresses the people in these, in, the, in these crowds, in these words. I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in, Sicily, in Cilicia, but brought up in this city. At the feet of Gamaliel, I was educated strictly on our ancestral law and was zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way to death binding both men and women, and delivering them to prison. Even the high priests and the whole council of elders can testify on my behalf. For from them I even received letters to the brothers and set out for Damascus to bring them back to Jerusalem in chains for punishments for those, for those there as well. On that journey, as I drew near to Damascus, about noon, a great light from the sky suddenly shone around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I replied, Who are you, sir? And he said to me, I am Jesus, the Nazarene whom you are persecuting. My companions saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who spoke to me. I asked, What shall I do, sir? The Lord answered me, Get up and go into Damascus, and there you will be told about everything appointed for you to do. Since I could not see since I could see nothing but the brightness of the light, I was led by hand by my companions and entered Damascus. A certain Ananias, a devout observer of the law, and highly spoken by all of the Jews who lived there, came to me and stood there and said, Saul, my brother, 
regain your sight. And at that very moment, I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, the God of our ancestors designated you to know his will, to see, righteous, to see the righteous one and to hear the sound of his voice. For you will be his witness before all to, to what you have seen and heard. Now why delay? Get up and have yourself baptized and your sins washed away, calling upon his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go, Go out, out to all, all the world, world and, and tell, tell the, the good, good news. <clears throat> For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out, Go out to, to all, all the world, world and, and tell, tell the, the good news. Alleluia. 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 I chose you from the world to go out and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink anything, any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just to locate ourselves for those who haven't been tuned into the sunset chat this evening from Magdala or the sunrise stroll and chat in the morning, we are closer here to Damascus than we are to Jerusalem. And there was a family here some years ago and they told us that they would go to Damascus to sell the vegetables from here and also to Beirut and Lebanon here from northern Israel, here at the Sea of Galilee. So they are close. And St. Paul was entering Damascus when he had this incredible grace, this unbelievable grace, that took him completely by surprise and turned his whole world upside down. And his life was changed, completely changed. He was the one we would least suspect who would, let's say we, let's say the apostles, all the guys here in the boat who saw so much of Jesus' life, his miracles, his, who knew intimately from their own eyes and ears and experience heard from those who were right there, if they escaped from that moment, they knew everything about Christ's death and resurrection. And they were there for Pentecost, and Paul wasn't. And they would never have thought that Saul would write a third of the New Testament. They didn't even know there was going to be a New Testament yet. And they didn't have a clue that he would be one of the most significant apostles ever in history, especially at the beginning of Christianity. <coughs> and really many other things, maybe we'll comment on a couple of them now. And I think we already draw one conclusion from this. God is God, and God can act. And we should never write off any person. <coughs> Pope Francis loves to say that God is a God of surprises. What a surprise. And poor Ananias, you know, we can make fun of him today, you know, respectfully. 
we can joke about him, you know, telling Jesus that he didn't make a good choice with Saul, <laughs> that he couldn't be serious, that that couldn't work. You know, sometimes we tell God what can, what just won't won't work. We tell God what won't work. And there's a beautiful line in the Psalms about that. It says, <clears throat> "Human beings plan and think, but God in heaven laughs." So Ananias might have smirked at Jesus. You can't be serious, Jesus. Are you really serious, Jesus? But God in heaven is laughing at poor Ananias because he hasn't a clue about the incredible plans he's going to accomplish in a drug addict, in a prisoner, in a terrorist, in a Down syndrome person. The people we suspect least are any importance in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have some amazing surprises when we get to heaven, by God's grace. We will have amazing surprises. We will be astonished and shocked at who is in the higher places. We will be amazed because God is doing marvelous things and he's a God of surprises. So then let us ask for that grace that we will never again look down on anybody. And they could be atheists today, they could be a wreck, they could be in any faith affiliation today, and God can do his amazing work in them, and we're not in control of that. We want to control, like Ananias wanted to control, we're not in control. God is in control. That is one of the greatest lessons. And then when we are disciples of Jesus, sometimes we also limit possibilities. And I would say we're here, this building here is called Duke in Altum. It's so beautiful. Everybody who knows it loves it, even if they're not Christian, if they're not Jewish, if they're not of any religious persuasion. Everybody loves this building for many different reasons. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. But it's capturing something very powerful. And Jesus said to Peter, who was deeply discouraged, Duke in Altum, go out into the deep. And I would say that St. Paul is a Duke in Altum person. St. Paul is not intimidated by anything. He is going out into the deep. Imagine taking up that pen, and actually he did it by dictation, so he didn't take up any pen or any tablet or any, <laughs> any keyboard or any ink. Some other people wrote it. Sometimes he signed his own name in the letters. But imagine the text he has given us. Even this text, the account of his own conversion, the words he has said about Jesus, uh, to the love of Christ, uh, we do not know the depth, the width, the breadth, the height of the love of Christ. He went into that. He's not saying that just because he's doing, working out some theory about Christ's love at his desk. No, he lived it. And so when he's, his letters are showing us a life. And if we read his letters a little bit, uh, we, or we take one of the letters and go deeply into it, the letter to the Philippians is beautiful the incredible intensity of passion, of love for that church in Philippi, for those people, those disciples. And he really, really loves them. Read that letter. And he was imprisoned and scourged in Philippi. <laughs> you know, the first place he evangelized in Europe, he brought the gospel to Europe, the first one. Can you imagine what he did? It's amazing. So he went into the deep in the apostolate. He went into the forum in Athens, and the Agora, and spoke to all the people, took them on. He went into the deep. He went into the deep in front of Herod. One of the scenes I really love is at Caesarea Philippi. And you can go there and you can more or less guess where that dungeon was. And that's where he was kept. And then he was brought into the throne room or the courtroom because Herod Agrippa came with, was it Festus, the Roman governor, and this, like read three or four chapters. If you want to pulse Paul's um, passion and his life and his fire, I would suggest you read chapters 20s of the Acts of the Apostles. I'm not sure exactly where it starts right now, but maybe 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, three or four chapters. 
You know, take 10 minutes to read them, read it, ponder it, and think about the guy that's living this moment and how he was going to be pulled to pieces in a battle, in a, in a, in a, a fight, uh, a theological uh, fight uh, in Jerusalem and how the governor took him out and then he brought him to Caesarea and now he's going to Rome. But he's two years in Caesarea and at some point then Herod comes along, Herod Agrippa and Bernice and we have <coughs> this little uh, hill here behind Tiberius, Berenike, Bernice, and so Paul is in audience before them. They call him in to cross-examine him and question him. And he's talking so intensely about the faith of his people waiting for the Messiah and how that is Jesus that Herod says to him, stop talking. If you talk anymore, I will have to join you and become a follower of this Jesus. Herod said this to him. The impact he made was so powerful on everybody. Sometimes he was rejected. That was a very powerful impact. They stoned him, leaving him dead. That's what they thought. But he wasn't dead yet, but they figured it wouldn't take long until he died. They left, he gets up, shakes off the dust, and walks away to another town to preach the gospel again. So when he says, we do not know the depth and the width and the breadth and the strength and the height of the love of Christ, it's because he experienced it. He had some amazing experiences, also of his own misery. This thorn in my flesh. And I asked God, take it away from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for you. So right now, stop for a second and think which horrible problem do you have? With your spouse, with a child, with a parent, with a friend, at work, with a manager, uh, with finances, with health. What problem do you have? Temptations, boredom, frustration, pessimism, half kind of depression, whatever the problem is, the political situation, the church situation, whatever thorn is in your side, turn to God and pray now. And then tell God that his grace is not enough for you. You know? What a, what a marvelous uh, experience that's so enriching and guiding and helpful for us. We could keep going on here, you know. Jesus said, go out and tell the whole world the good news. Go out to the whole world and tell the good news. What's more to say when we see what St. Paul did? So we stand for the prayers of the faithful. Dear sisters and brothers, we honor the great Apostle Paul who took the gospel of Christ to the nations and offered his life as a sacrifice of love. We pray for Pope Francis and all the bishops that we continue to be blessed by God serving Christ and his body, the Church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that all missionaries like St. Paul take the message of Christ to those who have never heard his name. May be urged on by the charity of Christ and deeply united with him to throw out their nets. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who still today reject, persecute, or ridicule Christians. May come to a greater respect for the basic human right of freedom of religion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Pray for all the Christians who are persecuted, who are in deep trouble and suffering, who are under great threat. We pray that they will be strong, that they will look to Christ, that they will enter into the love of Christ and commit, continue to commit and grow in their commitment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And now we pray for all the intentions each of us have in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who have the name of Paul, St. Paul, all the church communities dedicated to St. Paul, 
all the women called Pauline, Paula, Paula, everybody who is inspired by him, that there will not be just a name, but they will be truly and deeply moved by his example to follow Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Eternal God, <clears throat> may the whole world come to know the saving love and good news of Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Spirit fill us with that light of faith with which he constantly enlightened the blessed Apostle Paul for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your, your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim and your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Pierre Battista, our Patriarch, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I may say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to all of us from the very first disciples, from Mary herself, your mother, and for coming to Paul, to Saul, and to all believers until this moment. Jesus, help us to open our hearts for the great gift you are and to embrace your love, to discover you, to give our lives completely to you for the mission. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I hope in you. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I adore you. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which the blessed Apostle Paul burned ardently as he bore his concern for all the churches through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you do if you were in prison? What would you do if you were in prison? Be discouraged, embarrassed, humiliated? St. Paul wrote a lot of letters from prison. And he did so much good. He received many visitors when he was there. He preached Jesus there. Amazing that first night in Europe, in the prison in Philippi, completely scourged all wounds the earthquake, the prison burst open, the prison guard was going to kill himself. St. Paul said, no, we're here, we're not running anywhere. And then the guard took them to their home, to his home, and Paul explained the gospel, and he was baptized. That was the beginning of evangelization in Europe. You know, how would you do if you were in prison? God bless you, see you later. 